against the stranger. Me against my brothers, my brothers and I against our cousins, all of us against the stranger, saying attributed to the Pashtun. 6 a.m. You, Patan. Hard stop and careful finger off the trigger. I didn't hear him. What's wrong with me? Skinny boy, yellow pants dragging in the dirt, head tilted far back to stare down his nose. It's one of those quiet deployments on the Afghanistan border. We're on the outskirts of the outskirts. If we were any further on the outskirts, we'd be pants. One of those bombed out towns, just like you see in movies. Except this one has three-legged goats that hobble and chew through the trash, and fat-tailed sheep with deep red furrows plowed through their fleeces. Some of the little kids say nothing. Some of them shake. A lot of them shake. Their hands, their heads. One kid's knee shakes like it's a small flag. We patrol around the camp, around the village, around the fields. I think it's completely quiet. Everyone's inside, and then kids appear out of holes and walls, from inside bomb vehicles, from behind broken rocks, splintered trees. They watch us. We watch them. We're here to be friendly to the natives. I give it a try. You speak English pretty good. The boy waves a hand like he's Lord of the Mud Huts or something. You, Patan, your eyes like mine, your cheek like mine, your nose like mine. I don't look like you. You, Patan. But you fight with Americans. We're not fighting. The boy looks at me. The M4 walks away. Where I came from, Chatsworth, California. White rocks and cars hustling up and down Topanga Canyon. Chatsworth, the northernmost end of Topanga, where north runs out of the road, becomes the rocky brown hills that spill back over into Stony Point. Hottest weather in the San Fernando Valley. Cool enough to have Stony Point, where the rock climbing dudes hang out during the day and the bottle throwing teens hang out at night. Home of the Spanish land pirates who booted the Native Americans out. Missionaries in 1769, Dad says. My dad, the history, and just about everything else buff. Mutters answers to questions on TV quiz shows while he's doing his advanced Sudoku. Speaks five languages, including Urdu and Arabic. The kid's back. Come, Patan, I show you. He tugs at me in my M4, ignoring the body armor, the heavy boots. I could crush the small bones of his foot with one step. He pulls me toward the small, gray, flat-topped building, the Masjid. We used to go to the Masjid on Tampa Avenue. I was seven, and my job was to walk slowly with Dad's hand on my shoulder. We didn't go often because the hip surgery wasn't successful. I stop. We've secured all the buildings, including this one. Imam says, come, put gun outside. Sorry, bro, no can do. He throws his head back, doing his lordly pose. You afraid? Nope, it's just part of the uniform. I'm a few feet away from the door. I check, nothing moving. The boy jerks on my belt, and I can just see inside the machine. He finally lets go and goes inside. Gun clutched to my chest. I can smell the cool interior, see the shapes of the people. No one sees me. They all face the imam, who sits on a small platform and begins to speak in Punjabi. I'm holding the prayers of my father. The small boy runs to the front and clambers onto the platform. He folds himself into the imam's lap. The imam continues to speak quietly, settling the boy against him. Early morning in Chatsworth. My father is kneeling on his prayer mat in the playroom at the back of the house. He chants, his hands at his ears. He bows, he straightens. Finally, he stands, his hands in prayer, his eyes closed, his voice murmuring. He opens his eyes, and I can go to him. He makes pancakes and flips them in the air. He makes one with a T for talk. He makes one with a D for dad. We eat them with lemon and sugar. Next door, Mr. Windsor cranks up his Christian music. Dad tolerates the death and torture, the emblem of suffering and shame, but other songs make him mad. I come to the garden alone, and he walks with me and talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. To sing about God in this way, as though he is some, some boyfriend. <laughs> Inside the masjid is cool. 
I come to the garden alone. The murmuring inside the masjid is faint. The air is singing in my ears. The sweat runs into my eyes. One of my buddies finds me leaning against the wall. Fuck's going on? You dehydrated already, dumb fuck? He takes me back to camp and throws a bottle of water at me. Get your shit together, Tark. Lucky old Lefty didn't see you. Lefty is our sergeant, with a habit of using his left knuckles to crack soldiers over the back of the head. My buddies swear affectionately at me. Bastard standing there holding his fucking piss tube. Looking for some action, eh, Tark? Dad says air conditioning is unnatural. Our house sweats in the summer. When I was little, he sat by my bed and fanned me with my mother's white silk scarf. It smelled like the sea. We have a blue inflatable pool on the crack back patio. We sit inside with our knees bent up. Dad says the Chatworth heat, heat is like somewhere, somewhere, summers in Peshawar. The ice cream cart man who ding ding dings along Nordoff is like the ice cream seller in Peshawar. The women with the rugs slung over the wire fences along Topanga are like the women who spread their rum, rugs out in one of the Peshawar markets. I learned to spell Peshawar before Chatsworth. 10 a.m. Back on patrol. This time I'm ready when I hear the faint rustling. I don't even look up. What are you doing? Beat. A thud as the kid drops out of the tree. You not see me. Go home. He lifts his chin towards the machine. You carry this gun, but you not so tough. He might be able to hide the trees, but the kid has no whispering skills. Go home. I myself can kill you. I have a knife. He pulls out a tiny broken blade. Have you heard of a quiet voice? Dis my quiet voice. Give me American candy. <laughs> okay, I'll get some. He stands up straight. Hamasa. Like there should be a round of applause. Talk. I try a high five, but he misses my hand. Dad wanted me to go to college. I was all for car mechanics, good with my hands, but he wouldn't give it up. All the men in our family have been to university. So here I am. Books for blood, haha. <laughs> Tour Afghanistan, just across the border from Pakistan, where I still have two ancient aunties and four cousins, all much older than me. Sunday afternoons with the old school photo albums, two faded women in saris, and four untidy kids with mad hair and teeth that don't quite fit grins. Even if you don't know them, this is your family. Dad gently turning the curled pages. It's a tiny noise, but I grab the kid and almost flatten him as we drop next to a jeep. Cautious foot footsteps. It might only be the kid's father. How am I going to explain that I'm hiding behind a jeep with his son? I check Hamasa. His eyes are huge. He puts both hands over his mouth. I worm myself forward so I can see around the rear tire. Shit. Lardass, the unit incendiary device. I have to ID Hamasa and me and hope he doesn't shoot on reflex. Hamasa puts his mouth right up to my ear. We survivors. We stick together, right? Shh. I'm gonna idea, idea so we don't get shot. Hamasa jumps up. American! American! I snatch at him, yelling, don't shoot! Lardass, from zero to 100 miles per hour. You fucking little shit. I don't know if he means Hamasa or me. I walk in, American. Dis my place. We get out of here. Hamasa runs. Lardass strides over and grabs my collar like they do in the movies. I struggle to get free, but he swings me about with one hand. Why didn't you ID? You a fucking pedo as well? He's a friend, not a sex buddy. You wouldn't know the difference. Lardass slams me to the ground. We're all trained to withstand pain, but this guy has to be 270, almost twice my weight. Say again, bitch? I'm coughing too hard to say anything. I turn onto my side and get up slowly. He's got this crazy grin going on. You know what? You don't even look American. He points a finger at me. Boom. I look like my father. He says I have my mother's hands. I don't remember her hands. I was two, my father says. She died of a gentle heart. I don't know what lard ass is talking about. I look like every other grunt out here. My buds call me Dune Coon. It's a joke. You're our boy, talk. Yeah, I'm their boy. Noon. The quiet buzzes as I walk the fence. A thin, high sound. It's a bird's wail. It's a dying goat. If you like a den, a shooter should have put a ring on it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> Around a corner, squatting on a tree stump, Hamasa. Weird. He almost looks like one of the Pakistan cousins. He waves. Talk! We're survivors! Where is Candy? Jesus, I'm working, buddy. 
He nods. You know Christian. What? Christian no say Jesus, he beams. <laughs> Hamasa, your father will be worried. He waves his hand. No father. Bomb kill. Two, five years. Many people died this place. The hawks hanging high above broken, storms in Peshawar, broken stones in Peshawar. This is not my memory. It belongs to my father who saw the Indian plains. Houses exploding like bad fireworks. People's jigsawed under the rubble. This village has few houses intact. But the only building without damage is the masjid. These days, the bombs have moved on to the targets, and in other villages, other Hamasas are talking to other talks about how, how their fathers died, how the restaurant exploded, how they don't hear so good anymore. Hamasa settles himself against a fence pole. You don't have God? Everybody have God. Not me. Hamasa looks pitying. I want to smack him. Then where you go when you die? I shrug. Nowhere. Hamasa wriggles with laughter. Then you die here and go nowhere. I go paradise. You stay in dirt. <laughs> Great prospect. Listen, no one's dying and I gotta work. He clicks his tongue. You not work. You look birds. He's right. I've been looking at the birds. Dad knows all the bird names. Crow, bluebird, hawk, and all those small brown ones. A robin made a nest outside our house, over the carriage lamp. All those little fuzz balls poking their, head, their bald heads out. When the parent birds come to nest, the babies sound like tiny, sounded like tiny lasers. Pew, pew, pew. I'll give you candy this afternoon. Amasa beams. We survivors. Bye. You say. What? Oh. <clears throat> Stick together. He hops, pleased as if I've given him a gift. 2 p.m. We're patrolling the village. Life is one endless patrol. When I get back home, I'll be patrolling our house, the street, Masjid on Tampa. When, uh, the Masjid on Tampa. When I go out on a Friday night, I'll be patrolling the bar. Talk. You come. I take you. I'm getting used to him appearing suddenly. I'm not going to the Masjid. Hamasa flicks his hands in lordly dismissal. We secure and resecure these buildings, but you never assume anything. I'm scanning 360 as I follow him. We leave the main street, which is basically a wider dirt street than the narrow one we're on now. Maybe this isn't a good idea. I don't know this kid. Maybe I should go back. Come, talk. Check in, skyline, ground line, any corner, any uneven shape in the road, by the road, a little back from the road, any movement, any stillness. Every nerve is jumping, and I'm waiting for the electrical surge to go coursing through me any second now. Hamasa stops, comes back, tugs me toward a narrow alleyway, points to a small door. I can't go in there. It's okay, talk. No. Hamasa glares at me. Dis my house. Christ. Hamasa, man, I can't come inside your house. I'm not allowed. If his scowl could get any bigger. He throws his head back and I remember. He's the head of the family now. Listen. I'll just come to the door, okay? I can't come inside. But the small door flies open, and a tumble of short people rush out. <laughs> Four of them. The smallest is a boy. The girls are six, seven, and eight, or something. They cluster around me, grinning and shouting, Hello, ow! Amasa hisses at them, and they stand in a line. He commands, Name! Dina, Asal, Maliha. The boy can't say his name, and the girl tells me, Babur. He hangs back. One of the girls picks him up. She has a pink hair grip. Babur has a pink hair grip, too. They want to touch my uniform, my helmet. I hold the M4 out of the way. They ignore Hamasa, who is trying to order them back into a line. I want to tell them that I have cousins who look like them. Used to. The picture Dad has is when they all look like this, grubby t-shirts and torn shirts. Babur's nose is running. One of the girls wipes it on his t-shirt. They all talk at me like I can understand them. They try to pull me inside, but Hamasa says something brief and sharp. They reluctantly let go. I tell them, you my friend, talk. Hamasa, you're a lucky guy. He pulls a face. Too much, sister. <laughs> the girls sense his complaint and jeer at him. Tell them, you're my best buddy. I can see his chest puffing out. The girls laugh. One of them, maybe Dina, says something. Hamasa clears his throat. They say you come eat for us here tomorrow. I don't know how I'm going to do this, but Hamasa looks so proud, so skinny. That'd be great. Okay, and bring candy for them. 
4 p.m., camp patrol. Hamasa doesn't waste any time, walks right up to the fence. I grabbed a handful of candy after I made my 2 p.m. report. I dropped it into his cupped hands. M&M's gone, yes! I get many Afghanis. You're selling it? He looks scornfully at me. My buddies laugh as Hamasa saunters off. They get candy from all of us, talk. Sell it in the market. We're boosting the economy. I grin and shrug like I know I'm a gullible idiot. I wish I'd paid more attention when Dad was telling me about the cousins. I'll write him after night patrol and ask him for their names. 6 p.m. Explosion. Someone yells, contact left! We're running. We spread out and cover like we've been trained. We split into groups so we can circle around and cut them off. The enemy. We're running along the village perimeter, trying to ID the enemy, trying to keep our heads down. We want to overtake them before they can do anything else. Explosion. The green throws us like matchwood. I, scream, I scrape myself out of the thorn bushes. I can't see any of my guys. Got to move. Got to get back to my guys. Got to run when I see this flash of yellow pants. Fuck. Hamasa. You don't just stand up. You don't run out in the open. You don't yell. Hamasa! I'm full tilt towards him when he turns and runs to me. Explosion. The ground jumps and we're pounded back against something that guts whatever breath I have left. All I know when I can move again is that I've still got hold of Hamasa. We're shoved up against some skinny-ass tree that doesn't give us any protection. There's a shallow ditch and I roll both of us into it. I try to shield him. His breath is rapid. I can feel his heartbeat. Hamster feet running the wheel. I wanted a hamster, but Dad said they died too quickly. My breath comes, but it's slow. Shock, I guess. Dad says praying is what keeps him focused. He says prayer is his way of taking care of me. He says the craziest things. When I write him, I'll tell him about this dumb kid who doesn't know any better than to run around in the middle of a raid. I don't know if that's me, Hamasa. Hamasa is staring at me. I lift my hand and touch his hair. Feels like he's dumped it in car oil. Wait for the gunfire to stop. We'll get to camp. My breath is weird. He frowns. No guns, talk. They stop now. You can't hear the guns. Maybe you can't hear anything. He looks down. I look down. Blood pooling in his shirt. My shirt. All over us. Breath. Amasi, you're going to be okay. He is shivering. He opens his hands. Torn Afghanis and Tutsi rolls. If I could find where he's bleeding, you apply pressure to stop the bleeding. I know all about pressure. I ace the class. He sings something. Why is he singing? I don't understand the words. I can hardly hear his voice. Maybe it's the gunfire. He puts his arms around my neck. Talk. I care you. God love you. Buddy. Gotta get you out. I can't remember where I'm supposed to take him. Out of here. Somewhere away from the guns. I can't hear the guns. Dad would shake his head. Dad would make pancakes. One with a T and one with a T. T for Tariq. Hamasa is crying. I can't hear him. I can't hear anything. He says something and I concentrate hard. We survivors talk. Stick together. It's almost funny because with all the blood, we're pretty much stuck together now. <laughs>